Hello, welcome to Biograd TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Biography of Muhammad Kuna Ud Haidala. In the year 1940, a small family of the Sarawi Larusian tribe, living in a rural community known as Nuadibu, welcomed the son into this world. He was called Muhammad Kuna Ud Haidala. Like most parents, they were thrilled at his birth and prayed that he would have a good life, better than they had. No doubt they never imagined to what extent their prayers would be answered. The young Haidala had his secondary education in Roseau, near the border to French-administered Senegal. He then proceeded to Dakar, Senegal, where he got his first degree in science in 1961. Perhaps he felt his destiny lay in the military. He decided to join the Mauritanian army the year after he finished from university. In the army, he studied at a number of military colleges including saint sir which was a French military college. 1978 was a period of serious political disorder in Mauritania and the army felt they could bring order to the country. They went on to plan and execute a coup that ousted President Mokhtar Oud Dada. Haidala was one of those who took part in the coup. Following the success of the coup, he became a member of the Military Committee for National Salvation CMSN, and was rewarded with the position of Chief of General Staff. Sometime after, on the 31st of May 1979, Haidala was elevated to the post of Prime Minister after the previous Prime Minister, Colonel Ahmed Oud Bosif, died in a plane crash. But he was not satisfied with that and being answerable to the head of state, so in January 1980, he also seized power from the head of state while still holding the position of Prime Minister. He later appointed a civilian, Seed Ahmed Oud Binejara, to take over the premiership in December 1980. His regime experienced a lot of political unrest. A number of coup attempts were made against him, one of which was on the 16th of March 1981, for which he accused Morocco of having a hand in. Then another happened and this time he blamed Libya. But he managed to stay firm as head of state. Feeling the need to strengthen his hold on power, in March 1984, Haidala again took over the office of Prime Minister. But just a few months later, the man he kicked out of the position of Prime Minister, Mauya Ud Taya, ousted him in a coup while he was away in Burundi. A classic case of what goes around comes around, given that Haidala had been involved in coups and power grabbing. When Haidala returned to the country, he was picked up at the airport by security agents and locked up. It was four years after in December 1988 that he got released. For most of the time he was in prison, he was sick and so when he regained his freedom, he stayed away from politics for over a decade to recover his health and perhaps to also plan a comeback. He made his comeback in 2003 as the head of the opposition. He ran against President Taya in the November presidential election of that year but was unsuccessful. As is the case a lot of times, the unsuccessful person always cries foul and Haidala did, claiming the elections were rigged in favor of the incumbent president. Seeking for a way to get him out of the way completely, Haidala was arrested immediately after the elections and was accused of plotting a coup. After all, he had been part of coup plots in the past. He was later set free but banned from participating in politics. Haidala was again arrested on the 3rd of November 2004, accused yet again of involvement in coup plots. The prosecutor wanted him to be handed a five-year prison sentence, but he was cleared on the 3rd of February 2005 after a trial that included 195 people. Whatever coup that Haidala was accused of, real or not, finally took place, only this time without his involvement. The military carried it out against Taya in August 2005. Then in September, 
and amnesty freed Haidala from his sentence, which barred him from participating in politics. Having been liberated from the chains that bound him, he promptly announced on the 27th of December 2006 that he would be a candidate in the presidential election scheduled for the 11th of March 2007. He promised to fight poverty and slavery if elected, but to his dismay, he performed very poorly in the election, coming out 10th place with just 1.73% of the vote. This outcome was worse than his earlier attempt in 2003. Haidala would later express his support for CD Ud Sheikh Abdullahi, who emerged winner of the presidential election. But when the latter was removed in a coup in 2008, Haidala took an about turn and expressed his support for the coup, saying it was a positive occurrence given the circumstances. He also encouraged Mauritanians to give their support to the coup plotters. In July 2007, Haidala's son, Sidi Mohamed Oud Haidala, was arrested in Morocco for drug trafficking. The following year, he was sentenced to seven years' imprisonment. Haidala sent letters to some heads of states he believed had good relations with the king of Morocco, urging them to prevail on the king to have his son released. He believed his son's imprisonment in Morocco was a political vengeance against himself for the recognition he gave to the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic and the right of self-determination while he was president. His decision had turned Morocco, which was an ally to Mauritania, into an enemy state because Morocco had taken a part of the Western Sahara occupied by the Sahrawi. While Haidala was quite high-handed during his reign, he was able to achieve peace with the Western Sahara-based Polisario Front, which had been fighting Mauritania since 1975. It was also during his regime that slavery, which was culturally practiced widely in the country, was formally abolished, although it continues till date but at a very reduced level. When the presidential decree banning slavery was issued in 1981, Mauritania became the last country in the world to officially abolish slavery. But no criminal laws were created to enforce the ban, which was why it persisted even after. What have we missed out of this biography of Haidala? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.